Hey everybody, Mr. Odom here, and I'm going to cover section 5.2, which is proportions. So we're going to learn about what a proportion is, and we're going to um, learn about what the cross products property is. That's a pretty powerful property, and you'll use it quite a bit. You'll need your pencil, composition book, or notebook paper to take notes, and you will need a calculator. The learning target for this video is I can use equivalent ratios or the cross products property to determine whether two ratios form a proportion. So what's all that about? So let's get started. So the first definition we have here uh, is for proportion. So a proportion is an equation we talked about equations in chapter three. So it is an equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. And remember, equivalent means equal, okay? Two quantities that form a proportion are proportional. So uh, I want you to pause the video here um, and write this definition in your composition book. If you're watching Edpuzzle, um, the video will pause automatically. And the definition I want you to write down is just the first sentence. That's all you need to write in your composition book. So the video will pause now. Okay, we're back. And um, here's an example of a proportion. I'll write that bigger so you can see it. Two fourths is proportional to four Six, and I wrote that down wrong. It should be two thirds. Nice job. There you go. So two thirds is proportional to four six. All right. I'm not sure why that's. I got that. We're good. Um, All right, so let's continue. Let's do a little practice. How can we tell whether ratios form a proportion? So I'll work out a couple of these and then you guys can work out a couple. So for number one, I basically wanna know, does this ratio equal this ratio? All right, does one to two, does that equal five to 10? Because if it does, then these two ratios form a proportion. So what work do I need to do? Well, basically I need to look at, there's, there's a couple ways to do this, but one is let me look at these denominators. Can I go from two to 10? I can if I multiply by five. Well, what happens if I multiply the numerator by five? Well, I end up with this numerator. So these two, yes, they are proportional. So that's one way that you can tell if two ratios are proportional. Number two, I will use a different technique for this one. So I have four, six, and I want to know, is that equal to 18 to 24? All right. So one way we can do this is let me just see if I can simplify both of these. And I can. I know that 4 6 is the same as 2 thirds. I want to know, does 18 24, so can I simplify that? Yes, I can divide uh, the numerator um, by what? I can divide it by 3. That works. And I can divide the denominator by 3. Is there another number I could use? Well, there is. I can divide both of these by 6. So 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. So are these two equal? No, they are not. So this is no. These do not form a proportional relationship. All right? And I want to jump down to number 5. How can you tell if x and y are proportional? 
And actually, I can work out this problem right on the table, so I don't even need that. So here's what you're gonna do. You're basically, you wanna know, can I go from one to two and 12 to 24? And you can, you multiply by two. So these two um, ratios are proportional. Well, let me check to see if the second one and the third one is. Well, if I multiply that by two, that works. Multiply this by two, that works. So now I have three ratios that are proportional. What about, um, can I get from one of these to the other, going from four to six? Uh, can you multiply that by something to get six? You can, but what about from two to six? Well, what if I multiply that numerator by three and I multiply this denominator by three? I see that two times three is six, 24 times three is 72. So all of these ratios are proportional. So the answer is yes, X and Y are proportional, okay? So that's how you um, can determine whether or not ratios form a proportion. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to work out problems three and problem four. I want you to work out this problem and this one in your composition books. And you have examples right here of how I worked out one and two. So the video is gonna pause um, if you're watching Edpuzzle and it will do that now. All right, so we're back and let's look at problems three and four. So for problem three, let's see here, uh, let me pick green. Um, can I go from three to six? Yes, I can multiply by two. But what about going from 10 to five? I, if I multiply 10 times two, I don't get five, I get 20. So this is no, these are not proportional. They are not equal to each other. All right, what about number four? Um, Maybe uh, I try to simplify. Let me try to do that. So 25 and 20, I know both are divisible by five. 25 divided by five is five. And 20 divided by five is four. All right. Uh, for 15 and 12, I know they are both divisible by three. 15 divided by three is five and 12 divided by three is four. So when I simplify these, they are equal. So yes, these two ratios form a proportion, or we can also say they are proportional to each other. All right, another way to think of proportional is just to think of fractions that are equal to each other, okay? That's another way to think about proportion. So let's talk about this idea because this is a pretty slick, slick way to figure out if um, two ratios are proportional. And it's by using the cross products property, okay? So the definition says in the proportion, and it gives you A over B equals C over D. So we're saying that these two quantities, these two ratios are proportional, that the products, a times D and B times C are called cross products. So go ahead and um, write this definition down in your composition book. If you're watching Edpuzzle, the video will stop now. Okay, so we're back. And you can see here in the drawing, cross products properties. Let me see if I can get highlighter. Uh, what are they doing? Well, they're basically saying, hey, let me make a little cross here, okay? Um, and it looks like an X. And this is just basically telling you um, down here to go ahead and multiply the numbers that are diagonally across from each other, all right? So we could use that. We could have used that up here in these problems, all right? So let's take a look at that. 
me use blue, blue. So if I had 10 over three and that, I wanna know does that equal five over six? If I wanna use the cross products property, so this, this is not using the cross products property. This is just saying, hey, I'm going to use the cross products property. So here's what the cross products property looks like. I take six multiplied by 10. I wanna know does that equal three times five? And here I have 60 and here I have 15. They are not equal, okay? So that's a pretty good way um, to determine if ratios are equal using this cross products property. All right, um, so let's look at a word problem down here. And this problem says what? It says you read the first 20 pages of a book and you do that, I'm making some more room, in 25 minutes. Uh, then you read 36 pages in 45 minutes. Is the number of pages read, so the number of pages read, proportional to your time? So if I was going to set up a ratio or a rate, it would be pages read, so I'll just put pages over time. So that's how I will set up my ratios or rates. So uh, here's information I know. Uh, read 20 pages. And I read that in 25 minutes. I want to know, is that proportional to or does it equal uh, reading 36 pages in 45 minutes? Okay, and here's where the cross products property can come in and become really handy is, especially you get a calculator, is now I can just multiply these numbers, two numbers together, and see if it equals the product of those two numbers. So 20 uh, times 45, does that equal 25 times 30? six. So my calculator worked this out and what do I get? 45 times 20 is 900. Does that equal 25 times 36? So you put that in your calculator and you end up, where's my pen? There we go. 900. And yes, these two are equal, which means that this is a proportional relationship. Okay, 20, reading 20 pages in 25 minutes is equivalent to reading 36 pages in 45 minutes. Okay, so that is section 5.2. Hopefully uh, you will become comfortable manipulating um, proportions and using a cross products property. Uh, you'll get a lot of practice. So this is Mr. Odom, have, have a great day and I'm out.